Welcome to Not Kisses. I'll be showing you how to crochet this adorable 3D hat just in time for Valentine's Day. Whether you want to make a cute car mirror hanging, a hat flower, or simply add a touch of love to your space, this hat is the perfect project. For this tutorial, you'll need chunky yarn, fiber, dani needle, 3.75 mm crochet hook, and scissors. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy cheek crochet tutorials. To start, I'll create the apex of the heart. I've already crafted one, and now I'll guide you through making the second apex, which is identical to the first one. Once both are complete, we'll seamlessly connect them together. We're going to begin by making a slip knot. Grab your yarn and wrap it around your finger twice. Then take the first loop and place it over the second loop. Then take the second loop and place it over the loop which was the first one originally. You can observe that a knot begins to form below. Pull both yarn ends to tighten. Grab your crochet hook and insert it in the slip knot. After, pull the short tail of yarn to make a snug fit. Following, we are going to make a foundation chain of four. You're going to yarn over, that is, bring the yarn from the back to the front of the crochet hook, then pull the yarn through the slip knot. A chain has formed. Once more, yarn over, bring the yarn from the back to the front of the crochet hook, then pull through the loop. Another chain has formed. Once again, yarn over and pull through the loop. That forms our third chain. Make one more chain so that you have four chains. Following, you're going to make a slip stitch in the first chain that you made. Insert your crochet hook in the first chain then you're going to pull the yarn through the chain and you'll also pull the yarn through the loop on your crochet hook and that forms a slip stitch a ring has been formed and our next step is to work within that ring we're going to prepare for six single crochets within the ring to make a single crochet Insert your crochet hook in the ring. Then you're going to pull the yarn through the ring and that will leave us with two loops on our crochet hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops. Once more, you're going to insert your crochet hook in the ring and then you're going to pull the yarn through the ring that leaves two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the two loops. Add four more single crochets in the ring. Typically, when finishing a round, we would make a slip stitch in the first stitch. However, to maintain a seamless appearance without creating a diagonal seam, we'll skip that step. Instead, we'll dive directly into the first stitch and continue with single crochet. To ensure we stay on track, we'll place a stitch marker at the beginning of each round. Once you've put your stitch marker in the same stitch, insert your crochet hook and make another single crochet. We'll be doing single crochet increase in each stitch resulting in a total of 12 stitches since we initially have 6 stitches. To begin the next round, we are going to remove our stitch marker. Then in that stitch, we are going to make one single crochet. Don't forget to put your stitch marker back so that we can keep track. In the next stitch, we're going to make an increase. So we're going to put two single crochets in that stitch. In the next stitch, make one single crochet. In the next stitch, make an increase, so two single crochets. 
continue with that pattern and at the end of this round you should have 18 stitches To begin the next round, remove your stitch marker and put one single crochet in that stitch. Put back your stitch marker so that we can keep track of the first stitch. In the next stitch, you're going to put one single crochet. In every other stitch of this round, put one single crochet and I'll catch up with you here. I'm at the end of the row and I have one stitch left, so I'm going to put my last single crochet of this round. So we've made four rounds. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we've made four rounds. So for round five, six, and seven, we're going to repeat row four. So we'll do three more rounds and I'll meet you once you are done with your rounds. I'm done with my rounds and I have seven rounds in total. So you're going to make another apex of your heart. I had already made one, but when you, as you make the second one, don't cut off your yarn. To connect the two apex of the heart, in our first apex, we're going to turn our work as if we're working in the opposite direction. And then you're going to pick your second apex. And to join, you're going to insert your crochet hook in the first, in the last stitch that you made. Insert your crochet hook in that stitch and then grab your second apex and in the second stitch insert your crochet hook then to connect you are going to connect the two apex with a slip stitch so you'll pull the yarn through the first apex and through the second apex and through the loop on the crochet hook following you're going to insert your crochet hook in the two apex so in the second last stitch of the first apex and in the first stitch of the second apex and pull the yarn through both of them so that's our second slip stitch you're going to make a third slip stitch and then you're going to make a fourth slip stitch Next, chain one. Skip that stitch where the yarn is coming out from and go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. Then take your stitch marker and put it on that stitch to keep track. Make one single crochet in every stitch of this apex until you have 14 single crochets. I have made my 14 single crochets and I want to move to the other apex and make 14 single crochets so that in total I can have 28. If I move from here to the other apex, you can see that I'll have a very big gap. So what I'll do, I'll insert my crochet hook in the front loop of the next stitch, in the front loop only, and then in the front loop of the other um, apex the first stitch of the other apex and then the next stitch of the other apex so what i'm going to do next i'm going to pull the yarn through all those four loops just like that you can observe that we don't have a gap to continue i'm going to make one single crochet until I have 14 single crochets. I'll meet you here. Now I have 28 stitches. I wanted to have 28 stitches and I don't want to go directly into the first stitch because I'm going to have a gap. So that's why I'm inserting my crochet hook in the front loops of those stitches in the middle and making a single crochet to begin the second round. And then I'm putting back my stitch marker to mark that, to keep track of that as my first stitch. 
this round will be easier we've already made our first single crochet and in every stitch of this round we're going to make one single crochet in total you should have 28 single crochets so make one single crochet in every stitch and i'll meet you here i'm at the end of this round and to begin the next round i'm going to remove my stitch marker then i'm going to put a single crochet in that first stitch put back my stitch marker so that i can track the first stitch this round and the next round will be a bit different so for this round you're going to make one single crochet in the next five stitches so i've made my five single crochets and then in the next i'm going to make a decrease we decrease by inserting the crochet hook into the front loops because it results in a decrease that is less noticeable In the next stitch create a single crochet so you'll create a sequence of five single crochets and then you're going to make a decrease in the front loops so you repeat this pattern until the end of this row and i'll catch up with you here if you're following along you should also have two stitches left at the end of the row and we've both ended with a decrease stitch to begin the next row we are going to remove our stitch marker and make a single crochet in that stitch then we're going to put back the stitch marker so that we can keep track of our first stitch in this round you're going to create a sequence of four single crochets so i've already made my first one in the next stitch i'm going to make my second single crochet and then my third one and then my fourth one then i'm going to make a decrease to make a decrease in such a crochet hook in the front loop of the next stitch and in the front loop of the other stitch then you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops For this round continue with the pattern of creating a sequence of four single crochets followed by a decrease so you'll repeat this pattern all the way around and i'm going to catch up with you here if you're following along you should also have two stitches left at the end of the row and we've both ended with a decrease stitch to begin the next round remove your stitch marker and make a single crochet in that stitch then put back your stitch marker so we can track our first stitch prepare for a single crochet in the next stitch and then in the third stitch make a single crochet make a decrease for this round you'll create a sequence of three single crochets followed by a decrease and you'll repeat this pattern all the way around until the end of this round and i'll catch up with you here before proceeding now is the ideal moment to add polyfill or fiber use as much as necessary i have plenty of fiber so i'll be generous with it We are going to continue to begin the next round remove your stitch marker and make a single crochet where you put your stitch marker then put back your stitch marker so we can keep track of the first stitch in the next stitch make a single crochet then you're going to make a decrease in this round you're going to create a sequence of two single crochets followed by a decrease so continue repeating this pattern and i'll catch up with you here if you're following along you should also have two stitches left at the end of the row and we've both ended with a decrease stitch 
I've decided to add more polyfill so this is your final opportunity to include any additional. To begin the next round prepare for a single crochet where you had your stitch marker then put back the stitch marker so that you can keep track of the first stitch. Following make a decrease. For this round you'll create a sequence of one single crochet followed by a decrease stitch then repeat this pattern of one single crochet stitch followed by a decrease stitch until you reach the end of the round. In this round you'll only be creating decreases. Then I'm going to cut off my yarn. I threaded my needle, then I passed it through the front loops of the single crochets, of the four single crochets that I was left with. Now we are going to conceal this extra yarn in such a needle close to where it's coming out from. Then pull it out anywhere. Once more, insert your needle close enough to where the yarn is coming out from. Then you're going to pull it out from anywhere. And that's the pattern. To make the straps for hanging, make a slip knot and chain. I chained 70. 70 to 80. Once you're satisfied with your length, cut off your yarn. To connect the strap, grab your crochet hook. I used a smaller hook because it was a bit challenging to go into the stitches with the 3.7 mm crochet hook that I was using. So in that interconnectedness of where the apex meets, insert your strap. Pull the strap till where the chain starts. I inserted my yarn in the needle then I'm going to conceal the excess yarn just like I had done before. So you'll do that for both the sides. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I have plenty of other tutorials 
which you may like so be sure to check them out like and subscribe to let me know you want more videos like this one and follow me on social media at not kisses